Okay, so I've got a Nathan monitor here that a customer sent back to me. He says he's tried it a few times and just couldn't get it to work. So uh, we're gonna show the process of trying to figure out what's going on with it. If you ever have an injector that doesn't work, the first thing you always wanna do is check the delivery cone. Uh, because 99% of the time, the problem is just that the delivery cone is clogged. Um, well, the very first thing you may want to do is just check to make sure that all your water lines are tight and that nothing's leaking. But we're just going to take a look here. And everything looks pretty clean. You can see straight through it. Looking in here, I don't see anything clogging or blocking. So this is the, actually the very first time that um, that an injector has been sent back to me that wasn't just clogged. So I want to see if um, I want to see if I can replicate the same thing he's seeing on my test boiler. And if the injector just works right away, then I have to assume there's maybe something not quite right with his installation. Um, but if it doesn't work right then you know, we'll have to go through some steps to figure out what's going on with it but just looking at it everything everything looks to be in order so let's get it on the test boiler and see if we can figure out what's going on here i'm installing the monitor injector i have number of variations of these tubes for the different injectors, the standard injectors, the Nathan 4000, 1918, so I can pretty quickly swap them out to test a different style of injector. Of course the best part of this is playing with fire. Now I like to put a check valve on my boiler while I'm steaming up. What this does is while the boiler's heating up, the air that's inside the boiler can make its way out and as steam pressure starts to build, uh, it will close on its own. The other thing it does is when the boiler is cold, I don't have to worry about it forming a vacuum as it cools down, I can just leave it. Once the boiler reaches atmospheric pressure, the check valve will open up again and as the air cools down, it'll be able to draw air into the boiler and stay at atmospheric pressure instead of creating a vacuum which could damage the gauge. You'll see it close in 5, 4, 3, 2... We're going to build up pressure to around 75 to 85 psi before we get started. If only it actually went this fast. So now we're testing the injector at 85 psi, opening the primer and the steam valve, closing the primer. As the injector is trying to inject, it shakes like that because of the constant varying pressure in the delivery line, but it seems to be working. Checking the overflow to see if uh, I can feel any vacuum being pulled, if there's any leaks there, and it seems fine. And I'm adjusting the capacity and listening for anything weird, but so far everything seems okay. Now we're going to try at 145 PSI. And it picks up right away. So what I'm doing is just playing around with the water valve to see where it breaks, if it, anything sounds off. You can hear that the check valve started to flutter a bit when it broke, but when you quickly shut the water valve on and off again, it reseats itself. Now we're trying it at 35 PSI. I put the extension on the overflow on because that makes the primer work better. It was having trouble lifting up water this high at 35 PSI. It is lifting about 3 or 4 feet here. So with that tube it helps create a good suction at lower pressure. Almost picked up. Uh, did eventually pick up 
and it does sound good so we should be good even at 35 psi and it did drop down to 30 while filming this well couldn't find anything wrong with it got it cleaned up a little bit i guess that means that uh, there's something's not quite right on the customer's engine uh, there's so many factors it could be the check valve it could be something on his water line that's sucking in some air maybe the steam valve's too small who knows uh, maybe it's priming sucking water in through the steam line but uh, either way i got this cleaned up send it back to him to be honest i was hoping that there would be something wrong with it so that i could go into a little bit more detail on you know what i'm looking for and my thought process and that during troubleshooting but but it worked great worked from 35 psi we tested it all the way up to 145 and based on how it did at 145 it it should easily go up to 160 but um i guess that's it for today maybe in the future we'll get something in that that actually has a problem that we can investigate and figure it out so until next time Thank you for watching the video. If you want to see a video I made previously on how the monitor injectors operate, there's a link in the description below.